Hello, let us resume our lecture on Seamus Heaney's digging. In the, in the previous one, that means in our last lecture, we have found that the, the, the lecture actually ends with uh, the reference to his father. He wrote that till his training run among the flower beds been slow, comes up 20 years away stooping in rhythm through potter drills where he was digging. And then he writes, the coarse boot nestled on the lug. The shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly. So it was a kind of a descriptive notion that Seamus Heaney is working on. He is describing some of the utensils. He is describing some of the body poses. The poses are physical associations. He is describing some of the situations. He is describing some of the, the geographical perspectives. And now you can find that it is being associated in terms of the, the kind of a ravens and garments and maybe the boots that are being used by the farmers in the typical Kondla countries. Now he writes the, the coarse boot, that is the coarse boot of the father, it nestled on the lug, you see. The, again, the term, you see, the terminology as he's, you can find in, in Heaney's writing, there is some Irish flavor the words, the, the, the typical kind of a description, okay, the, the natural and also the geographical, uh, such kind of description cannot be found in the contemporary English writing, that means to be specific in the mainland. So here he writes, that is, uh, that the coarse boot nestled on the lug, the shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly, that means it is actually indicating towards a kind of a posture that a person is using while doing such agricultural activities. So that's why he continues. The coarse boot was nestled on the lug. The shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly. He rooted out. Now, the same kind of commemoration, the same kind of retrospection is being going on. He writes, he rooted out tall tops, buried the bright age deep to scatter new potatoes that repeat. Now, you can find that uh, for, uh, the poem actually began with the reference to my, that means the first person. Then there was a particular kind of a reference to the father, where a distant aloofness is being there. And now you can find the first person plural is being indicated. Here he writes, we. Why he is stating we? Because you can find that it is actually indicating towards the past. And when there is the reference to the past, you can find that the poet is actually creating uh, or maybe to some extent erasing the such a kind of a distance that is being at present the distance between that particular self of the father and his own self as a writer and now when he is stating in terms of the past you will find the term we is being incorporated here it says that against the the inside layer knee was levered firmly he rooted out tall tops Buried the bright age, bright rage of the potato drills, you see. Uh, deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked, you see. We keep, we picked from the, the, the ground. We, we picked from the, the field, obviously. And then he says, loving their cool herdness in our hands. So why it is called cool herdness? Because as I mentioned, that also you will find in this particular poem there are ample references there are ample provisions of some tactile images and also here you will find with the particular term cool he is associating some formal images also the thermal and at the same time tactile both images are incorporating one with each other and that's why he writes to scatter new potatoes that we picked loving their cool hardness in our hands so these are all memories you see here you will find that Seamus Haney is to some extent referring to he is associating some past experiences these are always present within him these are not simply the past experiences rather these are living to living roots as towards the end of the poem we also will find he writes to scatter new potatoes that we picked allowing their cool herdness in our hands then he writes there is a certain kind of a typographical gap as you can see he writes by God, the old man could handle a spade. That means the way he could deal with the spade, just like his old man. Now, that, that particular his old man, 
it is actually indicating towards the the father of his father that is the grandfather and then you will find here sima seni is indicating towards another particular uh, day that he had experienced in the close proximity with nature and also in the close proximity with the grandfather while he was working so from present to past from past to remote past and from remote past you can find that it is omnipresent it is always present within me so the poem certainly will find it is not simply indicating a kind of a description of the life of farmers rather or rather lives of farmers rather you will find that it is indicating that how the past is working within the present and at the same time the past self and the present self and at the same time you will find it is also indicating towards the changing of professions altogether all the things have been done in a quite haste he writes my grandfather it he could cut more turf in a day than any other man in toner's bog now toner's bog is actually referring to a particular kind of an area okay a particular kind of a place so that is the locality that is being pointed out here he writes my grandfather could cut okay think about could as if it was present my grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on toner's box so he was a very efficient person efficient in terms of turf okay the term turf again these have to be associated with the irishness the typical irishness because these were not present in the in the typical english form of writing that we find to be present today uh, the similar kind of term the turf is also being used by james hinge in his riders to the sea turf this particular term is actually referred to a kind of weeds you see that a kind of say, say the fuels okay the the lower part of the roots or maybe the the, the dried roots that could be taken from any any plant okay they, they could be used for fuel he writes my grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on toner's walk and then from generalization he moves to any particular incident he writes once i carried him milk in a bottle it was corked sloppily with paper so it was a particular day that he is mentioning he straightened up to drink it that means the the bottle of milk that the child simas hini carried with him he straightened up to drink it then fell to right away nicking and slicing neatly that means after drinking the milk he began his work and then that's why it is being stated then fell to right away nicking and slicing neatly why it is being stated nicking and slicing again as i mentioned earlier that you will find probably there are ample references of the sounds the various kinds of sounds that have to be related with you know uh, the various kinds of sounds that are related with the with the digging the digging procedure that's why nicking and slicing neatly heaving swords over his shoulder that means he was cutting picking up shards and throwing okay over his shoulder going down and down for the good turf so that is the thing that means he was doing his work and what was the work quote and quote digging then he writes that the coal smell okay then again you will find a kind of a typographical gap okay the stanzaic division is being made such a kind of typographical gap that the poets are using these are not simply you know the matters of whims these are deliberately chosen why because these are actually indicating different kind of time different kinds of thought processes okay these are the technical sections you see he writes them now to sum up he writes the cold smell i don't know whether whether the cold smell these two terms can be related with one with each other i don't know because you will find cold it is a form of thermal image and the smell it is olfactory images and both have been you know fused into one and then he writes the cold smell of potato mold that means when the potato was being molded okay again the sounds like squelch slap of soggy peat so these are all the onomatopoeic sounds again the cart cuts of an age 
So everything, that means each and everything that have been described by Sina Sini in the last few stanzas, in the last few lines, he writes, the curt cards of an age, through leaving roots awaken in my head. So that is the fundamental thing. What I'm trying to suggest here, what the poet actually suggested in the poem, that ultimately whenever you will think of your past, the past is always, you know, it is present within you. It is omnipresent with its living roots. It is always being awakened in your mind. That's why it is simply working within the mind of the poet also. But then Sima Sini chooses. The ultimate twist is at the end of this particular poem. Heaney writes, but I have no speed to follow men like them. I don't have the speed. You know, the speeds, these are actually symbolically signifying the instrument of cultivation or maybe the agriculturists. And that's why he writes that I don't, I, I also, I want to dig. But this particular form of digging is completely different from the persons like my father or grandfather. Because I don't want to use the spades to dig. Why? Because I don't have them. Just because I don't want them to use. Why? Because between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I will dig with it. So you see, digging, this particular term, it becomes a metaphor. Digging, this particular term, it becomes symbolic. And the poet says that it is not digging the earth. Rather, it is digging the memories. You see? And the process of digging, it is something different from the process of digging the earth. There also you will find there are the two references that Sima Sini is uh, pointing here. One is associated with the father, one is associated with, with his grandfather. And there is another digger in front of us, that is the poet himself. And he will use the process of digging with the help of pain. Okay, so he will dig with it. Dig what? Dig the memories up, you see? That is, you know, the, the past experiences, the originality. Okay, all these things have been uh, being dug by the poet and these will be represented in the form of the poetry. So that is the fundamental focus of this particular poem. And you can find the digging of the memories. So the significance of the title, if the question certainly comes, in the five marks question, describe what are the questions that are important here. You have to identify the word meanings, obviously. All the expressions and the word meanings, these are very important here. And ultimately, there are also the onomatopoeic sounds, the lists that have been taken care of. Ultimately, you have to make a kind of a list that the descriptive notions that is working within this particular poem. And at the same time, make an umbrella answer on the particularization of the significance of the title, digging, okay? How? The past was dug by the poet with the help of the pain through his poem, Digging. Okay, understood? I think it will help you in writing your answers. Prepare this. Okay, so today up to this, thank you then.